Hello Infobrusen, this is Anton, and it looks like for the first time ever, the scientists officially discovered a star consuming a planet. Finally discovering evidence that a red giant somewhere out there most likely ate one of its planets relatively recently. Something that the scientists have always predicted to happen, and something that might happen in the solar system, but something that's never actually been physically seen. Until of course now. But this is just an illustration, because in this case, the observations themselves relied on unusual observations coming from the star system you see right here, whose unusual emissions that resembled some kind of a strange nova turned out to be something entirely different when the scientists analyzed the gas. It looked like all of this emission and the unusual brightening was essentially the result of some of the material from the star temporarily increasing the luminosity of the star to make it appear as if it had a nova. Which is of course how they initially were able to discover this event. But let's discuss some of the details and what all of this means for astronomy. But let's start with the obvious. This is basically like looking into the future of our sun. We know that the sun is also going to become a red giant a few billion years in the future, beginning its red giant stage approximately 5 billion years from now. And at that point it's going to grow larger and larger, losing a lot of mass, engulfing some of the planets, especially Mercury, Mars, and very likely Earth, and dislodging some of the other planets, changing their orbits in the process. And this happens because the star runs out of hydrogen and starts fusing helium into carbon. But that's hydrogen in the core. The hydrogen on the outside ends up migrating to the outskirts and starts to fuse there as well, causing the expansion. So basically it transforms the star and the fusion in the star from just having hydrogen inside the core to now fusing helium inside, but also hydrogen on the outside. Although certain types of red giants don't even have helium fusion and only have the hydrogen fusion on the outskirts, which is essentially why they turn so big. And though the size increase takes a few thousand years, this stage itself can actually last for a pretty long time, more than 100,000 years in certain stars. Enough time to start consuming planets that might be a little bit too close. But the actual process of that consumption is not of course well understood because we've never really seen it. We've seen certain stars that are just a little bit too close to their stars, but never inside the envelope. Until of course now. And this particular simulation that you see right here, to some extent explains what might have happened here, as this planet was basically moving extremely close to the surface of the envelope. And so during this event that the scientists now refer to as ZTF SLRN 2020, several ground-based observatories detected unusual brightening visible in the optical light and the infrared. And as I mentioned previously, at first the scientists thought that this was some kind of a nova. And more specifically, a red luminous nova, usually a result of merger of binary stars, such as the one that you see right here that happened in V838 Monocerotis. They normally contain exceptionally low optical luminosity, but do produce a lot of infrared light, producing a lot of beautiful emissions in the process. This of course was an iconic event studied by various telescopes for several years. You can check out more about this in one of the older videos in the description. And so Caltech's ZTF, or Zwicky Transient Facility, that's actually really good at detecting various nova and supernova, discovered this unusual brightening a few years back. But it wasn't analyzed until now. And normally nova involves some kind of a white dwarf, which usually ends up releasing a lot of hot gas, which can be then observed with additional telescopes. And this gas is generally extremely hot. But in this case, when the scientists looked at this using other telescopes, they discovered that the gas was much cooler. It was actually the coldest gas they've ever seen, basically making these infrared observations extremely unusual compared to anything else. Here they expected to see a lot of heat, yet it looked like whatever happened here was most likely not a typical nova. And by looking at data from Neowise that's able to produce a kind of a timeline of infrared change, they found evidence of a lot of dust forming around this unusual star, but not the gas expected from a nova. And because only a few things out there can create such unusual infrared light, followed by brightness in optical light, this suggested that the scientists might have discovered an event we've never seen before. And since the star was also seen to be brightening a year before that, the only possible explanation was that something must have fallen into the star. But also very likely it didn't just fall right away, but orbited around the star for at least a year. And each single orbit produced newer observations and newer emissions. In essence creating a kind of an unusual infrared glow visible from really far. But once it actually fell into the star, that's when things get really interesting. 
Right after this, the optical brightness increased by approximately 100 times. And it stayed that way for at least a week. And so the combination of that infrared emission followed by optical emission was pretty much a telltale sign that this was some kind of an event involving most likely gassy object. And based on the observations of total energy released, the scientists believe that this was most likely something that's even more massive than Jupiter by possibly as much as 10 times. And I think here the actual surprise came from the effects this planet had on the star itself. And so first of all, it must have started when the atmospheric drag from the star started to shrink the orbit of the planet enough to make it come closer and closer. With this process lasting for several orbits, with the planet actually plowing through the star and pulling a lot of gas from its surface, sending it away into outer space. With all of this gas slowly moving away from the star and most likely turning into something very similar to snow and water vapor. And during that final event, when the planet submerged into the star, even more gas was released from the star, possibly because of this very massive object suddenly falling into the star, creating a major disturbance on the surface with the energy transferred from the planet to the star, making the star expand and become much brighter. But the more recent observations discovered that the star is now back to normal, making this a temporary event, even though the event prior to this lasted for about 100 days. And during those 100 days, approximately 33 Earth masses, in terms of hydrogen, were released into outer space, and approximately 0.3 masses of planet Earth released as other types of dust. Although obviously once the planet collided with the star, the total mass of the star increased just a little bit. With a lot of this material very likely now being somewhere in the outer space and potentially forming some kind of a shell around the star. And so to some extent that's maybe something that's going to happen to the solar system in the future, but none of this will be as dramatic. As a matter of fact, it's quite unlikely our sun is going to increase in size and brightness as much or even at all. Here the planet was a lot more massive. But because the scientists today predict that at least a few of these events happen in the Milky Way every single year, now we sort of know what to look for. We might be able to discover even more in the next few years. But there is obviously one more question here that we cannot answer. What exactly happened to the planet? Now, I mean, you would assume that it's going to get swallowed and possibly recycled, but it's most likely not going to happen for a very, very, very long time. As a matter of fact, for many thousands and millions of years, the super hot remnants of this planet are most likely going to be circulating inside the star, inside its envelope, approaching the core much closer and potentially influencing the star in some other ways. There's another video on the channel that you can find in the description that explains various unusual phenomena from certain stars, very similar to what we just observed from this particular star system. So in other words, the planet is still there, it's just really really hot and is going to remain that way for a pretty long time but it will definitely have more effects on the star, which should be observable in future studies and future observations. We'll talk more about this once the scientists discover something else. Until then, check out the study and all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.